did the man match. He did the monster match. It was a graveyard smash. It got on and flashed. He did the monster match. Welcome to the Pedo Collaborative Podcast. Happy Halloween! Hey everybody, and welcome back to the Pedal Collaborative Podcast. I'm your host, Alan, with my good friend, Paul. How's it going, everybody? We're back. Another week, another episode. Another week, another dollar. Right? Isn't that how the saying goes? I think it's another day, another dollar. Because that's okay, an another, alliteration. Another week, another seven, $7. Yeah, I guess that doesn't catch you either. I don't know. <laughs> no, we're not going to do that. But, <laughs> but this week, it's uh, it's almost Halloween. We it and is. If you have been following our Instagram, you have probably seen my spooky board, which mm. is all black pedals. I made a nice little set, took some pictures, made some sounds that we'll use later in this episode. Uh, and since tomorrow is Halloween, uh, we figured it would be a good time to talk and walk through the signal chain of that, right? Absolutely. Well, I mean, I think it's not only is tomorrow Halloween, and we've talked about it, for, you know, a few episodes or whatnot, but it also, you know, Halloween is a season where it's not uncommon for pedal manufacturers to drop a, you know, a spooky uh, design, right? And this year, uh, I think it was last week, Walrus Audio kind of threw everybody curveball and didn't drop an iron horse. They dropped their melee. Yeah, and it's a glow in the dark melee, it is. which is pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, and it's so. got that like um <clears throat> it's got the, the same tree or like a similar tree that's on the original uh pink melee, but the tree's made of like skulls and the, that's what's glows in the dark. Um definitely spooky and definitely rad. So if anybody was you know, really wanting to to bump up their game this year on spookiness, uh that's one to check out for sure. Yeah, they seem to. I feel like I've other builders have done. I know you and I talked about. Uh, you had a Cusack Gore louder version of their more louder years ago, but I feel like Walrus Audio is definitely the most consistent Halloween pedals. I'm yeah. trying to think if anyone else does it. Like there are pedals. A lot of my pedals are just like black pedals or pedals with a ghostly thing because I just also like that aesthetic. Right. Uh, all, all year round, just so happens that Halloween affords me the opportunity to decorate that I want to all the time. So. Well, I think you're the type um, that listens like, that you well, you watch Halloween movies year round. Right? Yes, yeah. Oh, for sure. And also like I, the Monster Mash is my favorite holiday song. If ever if ever asked that question, you know, most people have like a Christmas song. I I always say the Monster <laughs> Mash. Monster and people Mash. are like, What's yeah, what's wrong? I was like, it's objectively a great little bop. Hilarious. So that is awesome. That's awesome. <clears throat> but for you, honestly though, like so we're gonna talk about your spooky board. Um as a follow up to our episode, the first episode we had on the like tone is in the aesthetics with our good buddy Chris. You've also graduated uh, a very important milestone in your life, and it does tie into spookiness. Uh, do you want to tell everybody? What I don't you know did? what you're refer- What are we referring to right now? You don't know what you're referring to. All right, let me ask you this: um, Over the last, I don't know, twenty plus years, have you been using the same black and white oh. checkered? Yes, yes, I did graduate. Yes, because Chris shamed me by bringing it up on the episode. Uh, I got a new was, guitar strap for the first time since high school, which it was, seems it was love ridiculous. Shame. It was, <clears throat> yeah, love shame. It was not like a shame shame. Uh, and it worked out since we're talking about these as well. I got a couch guitar strap one that has two ghosts on it, um, yeah. which since we were just talking about that, very appropriate. I felt really nice. And I will say dropping from like a black and white nylon van strap that I've had forever. Um, the feeling of a fully nice leather guitar strap that is supportive. I'm going to probably do this for all my guitars now. And I blame Chris for this. This is an expense <laughs> that Chris caused in my life, but it well, is nice. It's really good. I like it a lot. So Chris is the president of the strap lobbying committee. So I, it, you know, we can blame him. Absolutely. Yes, and it, it does look cool. Like the two little ghosts, uh, I have it on my surf green uh, Fender Strat, 
And nice. I feel like it works really nicely together. So and you got the black and white one, right? Yeah, I got the black and white. I was between getting the one that has like the purple on it, but I was like, I this is something I'm going to use year round. I feel like the purple baby made steps. it even more Halloween ish. So yeah, yeah, and baby steps. I mean, you just graduated from nylon, so yes, I'm now I'm now a real boy in the guitar world. So. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for clarifying. I was like, what is he talking about? I was like, oh, yeah, I got a new strap because Chris said so. That's how yes. it worked because Chris said so, so I did it. That's right. So anyhow, yeah, let's get let's get into the board, though. Let's talk. So I feel like you should ask me questions because I could, like, talk about all these pedals because some of these pedals we've talked about, but uh, they fit in to... So you ask me questions, we'll go through this here. Okay, okay. All right. So um, can you tell us what your signal chain is? On your spooky board. Yes. Yes. So uh, I experimented. So this this was something I had in mind uh, because I, as we have talked about on like seven episodes now, I like black pedals and I like uh, putting it together. And so kind of knowing I was going to do this around Halloween time and put together and take some photos for the channel, but also I, it was really fun to do for myself. Anyhow, uh, I was experimenting with the signal path a bit to just kind of get uh, some unique sounds and see like what a board built this way could get me. So the way it's set up is up front. I have my deep six compressor tried and true. Uh, and that's, that's the first thing. So guitar into deep six. Then right after that, I have the JHS haunting mids, mm. uh, that goes into the walrus audio three, eight, five version two which goes into the Spaceman Explorer phase shifter. Oh, and yeah. And then, yes, that one looks really cool. And then the Explorer goes into the Black Hole Symmetry, which I just dropped a, a video of finally after we talked about it back a long time ago. <laughs> it's such a good the, video too, by the way. Thank you, thank you. Uh, Black Hole Symmetry <clears throat> goes into the uh, Champion Lecky Skitsy. And then the skitsy goes into the mood. And so just because uh, we were talking about it beforehand, the, that is the end of the mono pedals. The mood spreads to stereo with a TRS Got to it. Y cable there. Yeah. Uh, and then the mood goes to the LVX. And LVX goes to the slower. Slower goes to the dream and then to my doll. Wow. So a lot of power there as well. And a whole lot of not color. Yes, a whole a lot of big, black, big and white. lack, lack in color. Yeah, yeah. Yes. I, what, I guess I guess the I guess the skitsy's got some color on it, and the mood because you got that night or the bright light, the light bright, light bright, light one. bright. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They got they got a little something going on, but the the basis of the pedal is black. So, now, man, that's a that's a fantastic board, and you know, um, I, I'm looking I'm looking at the list because I kind of wrote it down as you were saying it, but. Uh, you know, it's such a powerful board and you spend so much of it in mono before you do split it to, to, to stereo with the mood. Um, and I know like we joked around that, like, I wouldn't like this board because of that reason. But I mean, if I'm just looking at it, right, you get the deep six is a compressor. It's a classic one that you've had forever. Uh, the haunting mids, I think that's like a preamp. And I remember messing around with it before you got it. It's such a good pedal. Yeah, it's a really fun little thing that I was just kind of like, do I need this? And then, the, you know, the joke of it having the mids for like a tube screamer and boosting or scooping mid frequencies. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it does a really good job of just doing that. Yeah. You know, it's really good. Plus, it does match uh, It does match your new your new couch strap uh, aesthetically. Yes. So uh, then you go into your 385, which is your overdrive. And uh, from there, you start going into... So I, and I'm kind of doing it this way because like, if, if we hearken back to our um, original series of the signal chain, like it, you're, you've done exactly, you know, what we kind of started out started out with. We started out with compressors and then we went to, you know, your preamps slash your overdrives. And then you start kind of going into some of the modulation stuff. So if we take, you know, if we kind of hold off for a second that on the black hole symmetry, you've got your reverb, your delay and your fuzz all kind of there because it's, it's kind of hard to place certain pedals where you can't really move. Like what I mean by this is, the, is like fuzz is usually pretty early in your chain delay and reverb are kind of in the end, 
but a pedal like glycol symmetry kind of limits, and I'm using that word very loosely here, um, but it kind of limits that, right? So you, you have to either choose to put it all in the front, all at the end, all in the middle, or wherever it is. And seeing that you've kind of placed it kind of smack dab in the middle of your modulation, um, to me, I'm, I'm guessing opens up a ton of just really unique sounds. Um, and so my question to you is like, is that, well, well, let me just ask this way. Why did you put the black hole symmetry right in the middle of your modulation section? Okay. So the black hole symmetry, so there's a lot of reverb and delay on this, which is how I play. So that's not super surprising, but the black hole symmetry with the fuzz kind of early, early on in the signal path, I do like it there. Um, I did mess around with this, but part of it, it's a mono pedal. Right. So I wanted it to, it had to sort of go earlier because I knew I wanted to stereo spread at some point. Right. Uh, but I do really like the, so kind of back to back going into each other, the black hole symmetry into the skitsy by putting fuzz right between, before those like modulated and tremmy reverbs. Yeah. And then that goes right into the mood with the micro looper. Um, oh gosh yeah. that yeah that created some really cool opportunities for like drones that kind of sounded mangled right away with like literally if i just turned off everything else and just had the fuzz let's say like the fuzz and a little bit of slap back from the black hole symmetry into the modulated reverb of the skitsy and just like micro looped it getting sounds right there where I was like, ooh, I kind of like what I'm starting with here. And uh, I like to use the envelope filter looper of the uh, mood because then yeah. you're like playing kind of effects around it. And um, that was creating some really cool opportunities before I even got to like the LVX and the slower at the back end of the chain. Right. So the choice was sort of like thinking of it as like a mini signal chain within the signal chain. Um. Mm -hmm. Because I did have the black hole symmetry at one point in a full mono run after the LVX and before the slower. Okay. Um, and having fuzz like towards the back end of your chain created a cool opportunity there. Just because it was like almost more of just a texture and less of like a traditional fuzz. No, that so makes perfect sense. That, that is how I got landed on the decision of where it is right after the phaser, but before the skitsy. Yeah. Well, and I think you just kind of uh, you just kind of touched a, a something here in, you know, we have our general, our general signal chains that we like to do. Um, you know, you, me, we have our own, everybody. I mean, realistically, everybody who's a, who plays, whether they know it yet or not, there is kind of that preferred signal path chain that you use on a regular basis. But, you know, you, you're dissecting it here. Like you just kind of said that you had dissected that so that you could kind of play with each segment and kind of find the right space. And, and I think that looking at it holistically, but also kind of diving in and, and whittling down into some certain elements kind of gives you that ability to really hone in the, the sounds that you're looking for. Um, so that's pretty cool. And I think that's something that I think uh, that anyone listening, you know, if, if you have your regular chain start dissecting it in segments and determining like if that is how you want it, or like perhaps you want to move things around because you might find yourself in some cooler places. Yeah. It's, it's something that, you know, as we did go through those episodes and I, I think we said it several times throughout, I was like, this is our like recommended and sort of best practices signal path. But, but by all means, you know, change things up, mix things up, move things around. I think we said that several times. And yeah, uh, the idea of sort of looking at sections of your pedal board and how they interplay with each other is something I think I have gotten more comfortable with over the recent years. Um, because when we were both like strictly house of worship players, cause that was like our main gig at the time, right. you know, it, you don't really get like, I'm not going to throw a black hole symmetry at the end of a signal chain for that. Cause no one wants to hear fuzz through the church mains. Uh, that way. <laughs> it's just not, not the sound we're looking for. Um, 
but being able to sit down, especially because a lot of stuff I'm like doing sound design for either uh, film work or just simply trying to get a very specific sound for a track I'm recording. Um, looking at like, okay, on this part of the song, I'm only using these four pedals. So how do they interplay with each other? Mm. And thinking about it that way, I think is really fun to break down. And it was fun putting this board together because of that, because it's, you know, a bunch of stuff that doesn't necessarily go together all the time. Yeah. Sometimes these pedals are on a board replacing each other as like, this is the only reverb on this board, but I'm putting together stuff for projects. So Sure, sure. So this is your spooky board and it's, you know, is it primarily because they're all black? And if that's the case, were there any pedals that still fit that aesthetic that you didn't put on this board? So I toyed with, good question. I toyed with uh, the black monumental. Ah, uh, yeah. That one also having the wolves, I was like, I got a little werewolves theme kind of here, but um, th so it's a good question. And the theme was twofold for me. One, uh, black or ghostly or, you know, feels like it looks good in orange and purple light, which I use for the shoot. Um, or, you know, I then firstly, I looked at the aesthetic of all my pedals and then I looked at like what I wanted to try making some noises with. Right. And the Monumento for like this, like it was just like, not doing what I wanted to because I had the monumental in there actually, uh, as well as the Keeley filaments, which is a black distortion pedal. Oh yeah. Uh, and then right after I did this photo shoot, the, uh, the Octa size black too, which I feel like could have made an appearance here, but I, you know, we'd, we'd be moving things. I, there had to be some omissions cause there's only so much pedal board <laughs> real estate and I wasn't going to get a bigger pedal board just for this. So, um, but, but I looked have. at, you know, I could, I could have, but you know, it's not what we're here for. Um, <laughs> so yeah, it was the, the monumental and the filaments both were debated. And then kind of the way I used just going back to the beginning, the haunting mids, the deep six and the three, eight, five together. Mm -hmm. um, there's a little bit of gain staging in that, uh, you know, the deep six adds a little bit of bite just cause it's a compressor and I have the level up the haunting mids in that it's kind of designed as a preamp to scoop mids or, uh, highlight or drop out mids right it's cool though because it does work like a boost with a little bit of dirt to it depending on how you have the settings Traditionally does work better with like a tube screamer where those mids are sort of your wonky thing you're fighting with. Um, but the way I had it set for this worked really well, kind of as like my first gain stage, like sort of an always on, just add a little bit of grit and tone shaping to my clean tone. Yeah. Uh, so I was like, I have too many gain stages to fit the filaments and it doesn't work uh, <laughs> so with the 385 having two. So I was like, it would just be right. like a redundancy in playing for anything I'd be making with this board. So yeah, few omissions. They were intentional, though. I did think it through, and I wish I do wish I'd had the octasai beforehand because some of the samples I would have probably played with that because that octave bend is you can get some real spooky sounds out oh, of that. Oh, totally, so. totally. Put that before some some nice thick reverb, and there you go. Yes, and I'll have to. I'll as I said, we're gonna we're gonna have some sound samples here. The one I want to definitely highlight is that one I sent you of where I was doing like basically making it sound like slide guitar. Yeah. When I did that, that was actually effectively this same board, but I just put the octasai where my volume pedal... Oh, I forgot volume pedals in here. The volume pedal uh, goes uh, before the before the black hole symmetry. So after okay. the phaser, before the black hole symmetry. Uh, okay. I just can put you, the octasai where that was. Can you pause for a second? And this is totally tandem like thought. Um, because we haven't talked about volume pedals before, I don't really think. And you and I put them no, in No, we haven't we put them in different places and I really like the reasoning that for, that you use, but I, you know, I put mine at the very beginning because like I'll use it as like my master volume, drop it out so that I can, I can mute 
my signal chain and then, you know, tune up my guitar as needed. Uh, but still have like, if I'm, you know, I also use it for swells and that sort of thing. But like, you know, if I have anything in my wet section, like whether it's delay and reverb, I can drop out the volume incoming from the guitar and be able to tune and that sort of thing. And while you can do that, putting it in the middle, I've always put mine in the beginning, but you put yours in the middle and talk about that real quick. Yes. So I always do that no matter what. And the reason I do that, I think we did allude to this early on when we said we weren't going to talk about utility pedals as part of it, which (laughs) I think we'll revisit signal chain at some point and do that. But um, so the reason I've done that is so for me, especially live playing, I like to have all the noise making dirt pedals um, before the volume swell. And what I find with that is, and, and, and I put modulation in there too, because then when you swell in your volume, you're actually swelling in your gain stages, uh, in Mm -hmm. addition to your clean signal. So it adds a little bit more, uh, body to your volume swells into your time-based section. The other piece of that is if I am, you know, because often, especially nowadays, I'm often in the studio recording. If I want to like stop and go play with a synthesizer or, uh, you know, go over and say, okay, cool, that's a good guitar take, but I like know I want to keep the settings where they are. I can just turn down my volume pedal in the center and leave all my drives on how they were. And it cuts the like white noise that drives do when you're not holding your guitar. I mean, that's brilliant. Um, because they're in the middle, and if you if you have it after, if you turn off your volume pedal where it is, like it's going to cut your guitar, but you're still going to have white noise coming through from the right. drives being on. You have to turn them all off. Right. So for me, it it's the volume swell thing because I do use that a lot in like ambient playing, and then just as a practicality thing, turn off all the noisy things really quickly, but just heal down. So that is why I put it there. Brilliant, brilliant. Well, thank you for sharing that because I I bet you not only myself but others probably had an aha moment just now. Ah, well, yes, happy to share. And thanks for going on the real, your, your tandem thought that became a little tangent that I think was uh, a good good idea. So, <laughs> uh, right. yes, I replaced, so I did replace that when the Octus <clears throat> I came and I made some cool slide things into the verb section um, just because, and, and I remember you, we were texting about it. You're like, I did not make it do that when I was messing with it, I was like, yeah, no, it was like the first thing I thought of was like, Oh, I bet you I could like slide guitar this. If I like played it correctly and set the the release time correctly. Um, Yeah. So anyhow, I do love how we approach the same pedal completely differently, which yeah, it is. It's been fun. And like, I've obviously known that for years of us, just as we have talked about sending ideas back and forth, but kind of since we started the channel and the podcast and working on these together, it's fun because the pedals are like shared instantly. And it's like, you'll, you'll have it first or I'll have it first. And then we swap and it's like, well, that's like a totally different thing that I wouldn't have done with that. And we get to sort of have like a very quick lifetime reaction to it. It's very fun. Yeah. So. Super fun. Super fun. Um, so there's two things stuck in my head right now, based on what you've said in you know the last 10 minutes or so. And I want to revisit. Um, first of all, you talked about the black hole symmetry at not being at the end and you referenced our, uh, our history in house of worship. And I, I'll put it in the show notes and I can't remember exactly what the Instagram channel is right now, but a buddy of mine, and I don't know if I forwarded this to you, but a buddy of mine sent me, um, there's like a, there's like a church up in New York, I think, uh, or a worship team or something, but it's heavy. It's hardcore. Um, so I, it, I think it, they, they would appreciate the black hole symmetry at the end, the fuzz, they would, they would do that. Right. Like a, basically like a doom worship team. Cause that's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, like the video that, um, I don't want to go too deep into like the titles of, of, of songs here, but the video that, the, that, that my buddy sent over, um, has, um, like great. Are you Lord? Um, that I think what the classic Chris Tomlin song, but anyway, it was like, Oh yeah, like absolutely. Like that would be the way to do it. So um, I'll send it to you and I'll put it in the show notes. So if anybody's interested in that, 
um, it'll be there. I look, fo- I look forward to that. Yeah. So. Um, and sometimes like, and here's the thing, this, this guy, um, I'll, I'll call him out. Brad Williams. He's a buddy of mine. Um, I'm not even sure if he listens to this podcast, but he, he and I always send each other the most random things. And every once in a while, it's like, I don't know if he's trying to make me laugh or just show me something like totally interesting. Um, but in this instance, I found it totally interesting because it's, it's definitely a side of that uh, praise and worship, house of worship style that um, does not get represented musically a lot. And uh, I thought it was in, in that way, pretty cool. Yeah, no, I, I, I've, I'm always open to seeing weird things that people have done like that. So yes, please, please put it in the link as well for everyone. So yeah, I will absolutely do that. Okay. And so the other thing, and it is a request from, for Walrus Effects for the um, Halloween season of 2025. Please do the monumental with werewolves. Yes. Yeah. I kind of, that idea occurred to me, as I said, and I'm like, oh man, it's wolves. That's still a little spooky, but werewolves would be awesome. And if they like, instead of doing a white outline, just did, did either glow in the dark like they just did. Or they made the little icons orange. Either one would work for me. It would be it very could. spooky and it would be good. Um, could they also... I don't know why I want them to also, instead of just making them werewolves, they could do the monumental... This is this may be like two steps down the road here, but do it um, as Michael Jackson from Thriller. When I he mean, becomes a work. werewolf. Like, that would be monumental. That... That would work. See, Walrus, see I don't know if you recall this. Several years back, uh, 2015, when Star Wars came back, yeah, uh, when Disney launched The Force Awakens, uh, Walrus, for like a few days, had a Star Wars art collection. I remember And that. then it went away. And I don't remember if they ever explained, but I think it was probably a cease and desist from Disney. Yeah. And I'd imagine yeah. the Michael Jackson estate might do the same thing. You're correct. They probably would do the same thing. So maybe just do a regular werewolf, and then we'll all know that it's an it's that an it's M- a little nod to MJ. Michael Jackson. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. There you go. I like that idea. I'm, I so, feel happy. yeah, yeah. I'd be I'd be happy to play any version of a monumental that was specifically Halloween themed. So, we well, go. all right, folks at Walrus, like get on it. That's what we're asking. Um, if that means you have to not release any other effects for the next year, then I guess that is what you have to do. Yeah, no, I, I'm I'm okay with that. I'm okay with actually more builders making spooky themed pedals. Because um, I was thinking, I actually was doing a little list bef- while, while putting this together, while putting this board together with what I had and what I owned. Uh, I was debating like, well, what else would be cool? Like what are other pedals I'd like to have that fit the Halloween theme? And I was like, even thinking just like the name of the pedal, because there's yeah. quite a few like Halloween, like, so like the Red Witch Medusa is a pedal okay. I thought like, oh, branding, the the company's called Red Witch, we're already there. Right. And Medusa, kind of spooky, but that's a white pedal. They need a, they need a Halloween colored version of it. Right. It's a white and red pedal. Um, there was a couple others I like threw into the mix that I was thinking like, hey, more builders need to do Halloween theme. That's that's that was my takeaway. Yeah, another one I was looking at though. I don't, and I, it was just I was like googling it while I was putting the board together because what what I often do. I don't know how you all put together your pedal boards. I'd love to actually have this in the comments because I'm so curious. But uh, I often like I have an idea in my head, and then I put on a podcast and as I go to town on wiring and making sure I have the cable lengths correctly and everything. Um, but while I was working on this particular one, I was looking at, I like just had the tangential thought. I was like, I wonder what other pedals there are. And I found one that I've never even come across before, which was the El Rey Mystic Fuzz. Have you ever seen that one? No. It It's like a little Ouija board artwork. Oh, okay. Yeah, that would totally fit. Yeah. So I was like, there might be, by by the next time Halloween comes around, I might have acquired a few more Halloween themed pedals so that my next board is like more ghostly, more haunted, more spooky. It might not, it might just be not black and ghost theme. It might be a ton of stuff like that is Halloween related. So I mean, would you, ha- I mean, would you be limited to the colors? Like, would it have to be either purple or green or orange? 
I mean, we make the rules, so we can do whatever. But I think I want to lean into like the full art aesthetic of spooky pedals next Got year. It. Yeah, that was my ta- that was my takeaway. This was a really fun board. I had a lot of fun making sounds with it. But I want to lean next year more spooky. I like it. I want to be so I want to be going. terrorized by the look of your pedal board. Yeah, you're going to look down and you're going to say, oh my gosh, I'm so scared of that Ouija board that's going to summon a ghost with the sound of it, with that fuzz. <laughs> so that's what I'm going for. That's what I'm I here like for. It. I like it. So good. Um, so anything else you want to talk through with this? Because I, I do have a question related to this episode, actually, that I pulled from the forums, which uh, just while I talk about that, uh, we did not get a question of the weekend with Steve last week, as we did say oh, in our dude. wrap up. We uh, we ran out of time, so we'll get we'll get one as you know. We talked. Steve may come back. We'll get one for him that time. I hope he comes back because I mean he had so much really good information to talk about, and it was like you know we've we've I've kind of di- dived, I've gone into some of the dove? science. Dove, dove in, dove in. I think is the word. Um, I've talked about some of the science on some of the effects, but not to the same degree of knowledge that Steve has and his ability to just really just explain exactly what, you know, what, mod- what is modulating the LFO or whatever the case was in, in that, that conversation. He said it in such a fantastic way that it was easy to follow. Um, but it wasn't watered down. Like it was still full of information just easy to understand and i love that so i really want to just basically give him the floor and have him talk and talk and talk and talk and just listen again yeah i was i i mean steve did a great job of making everything very approachable from the and and i yeah. i know i made a few jokes too where i was like oh yeah no that's uh that's exactly how i would have described it uh but he did <laughs> a fantastic job just explaining things and i'm really excited for his new pedals so yeah um that aside, do you have any more questions or thoughts on Spooky Board before we go into my question this week? No, sir. I am all geared up for this question. Okay. So this is from our guitar pedals, which is where I get a lot of them because there's good ones there. And sometimes they're funny. Sometimes they're just, they fit the theme. This one fits the theme though. This is actually okay. from a few, I guess about two months ago, okay. but relevant because the question was, does anyone use lo-fi pedals or any pedals in general to make some spooky Halloween-esque music? If so, I'd love to hear it. I've been super inspired by Luigi's Mansion and other games, so I use pedals to get that sound. So I saw this question, and I was like, well, yes, that was the whole thing I'm doing. Right. But wanted to know if there's other pedals that you feel like would get the Halloween spooky sound. Because I, I, I was like, you know, as I said, doing some research here. But if you, artwork aside, name of the pedal aside, and someone said, Alan, make spooky music, what are you going to do it with? I mean, I would probably... I would probably lean into something like the Therme with a really slow Ooh, pitch yes. shift, um, almost bringing in that that slide guitar kind of feel, like that you mentioned earlier. You, I think you mentioned it with like the Octasi, but yep, but but something of that nature to really just to do some really odd and quirky stuff. But um, if it doesn't exist, I would also does it have to wait? Does it have to be a pedal? <laughs> I mean, I mean this this was particularly a pedal related question. Okay, but you can say whatever. I'll tell you what I would like to use, and if there is an if there is a pedal out there that does this, uh, you you might know, and if not, some one of our, our listeners might know. But I would love something that basically turns your guitar into a theremin, not a therme, a theremin. The yes, you know. It's funny you say that because that's actually so for me, especially because this guy and I know Alan, you have probably not played Luigi's Mansion, the video game. Is that a good guess? Yeah, I'm a thought, resident gamer. I, I actually thought it was a a, a guitar effect, a pedal, a, pe- a pe- Nope, <laughs> it's like, uh, not Luigi, 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 as in Mario's brother, and he uh, vacuums up ghosts with a tool called the Poltergust. There's three of the games out. So oh, okay, yeah. Um, but a lot of the music in Luigi's Mansion, first off, fantastic game, unrelated mm. to pedals. Uh, but a lot of the music is really cool environmental music, like the creaks in the stairs when you're walking, they like turn it into like a musical note with like a, a string spooky sound on a synth or something. Oh, okay. Uh, but a lot of the melody work is a theremin. 
Mm. Uh, because I think of all of the instruments that have ever been made, theremin is universally spooky sounding with that little ghostly woo yep. noise. Um, I actually have a patch on my OP1 that's a theremin sample that I used to do a remix of the Monster Mash I believe I sent you before. Yeah. Um, just because it sounds Which great. Which I did not know, and I don't know what you're going to do with this. Like, but I didn't realize that was a, a mix that you did. I thought I thought you had found it, like on. Oh no, no, I made that with my. That was actually all made on my OP one. That's nuts. So yes, all OP one. Um, so there is a couple pedals I think we got to try out for next year's Halloween. There's so when, when I searched theremin pedal because I did that when I saw this question before okay. I brought it to you. Uh, for me, before I answer the question, I would say I would use a chorus and an octave generator to get close to it if I didn't have a theremin pedal, just because okay. you can like really warble those up and get spooky noises. Um, but so the ones that popped up, the Pigtronics Glomer Polyphonic Amplitude. I'm very curious what that sounds like. Yeah. And then there is a pedal called the Electro Faustus Photo Theremin. Okay. Uh, highly intrigued by that as well. Are they using like a photodiode and like I'm assuming just, light? just based on looking at it. Yes. Okay. Um, That's which cool. sounds really cool. I actually many, many, many years ago did a photo diode like that on a boss DS one mod. Okay. Um, where like you can the, turn the your seeing eye mod. Is that what that was? Or am I, I thinking think so. I remember that? this is like 2007. Okay. So I don't, I just remember doing it on a DS one and adding a new photo led. And then I had like a little switch that like switched between the DS one sound. And then this wacky, you waved your hand over it and it would create like weird noises. Um, it was fun to like put in front of like at the time, like a boss DD pedal and just like chop it up and then turn the time knob and just have this crazy sound like self oscillate. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I think, I think we had the same idea too. It's like, here's what I would do it with. I have but a theremin pedal would get you the spooky noises so okay so i I, um i just remembered something something that i have that would get us close to the theremin vibe um the metaverse double gate drone synth it's oh yeah i count that as a pedal because it's in a pedal form (laughs) it's like i mean there's not i don't think there's a foot switch but it is a it's a pedal size like it's a pedal enclosure yeah no you're definitely right that probably that would probably work though yeah so anyhow, so our answer is very uh, long winded, but I think we said what we would use to get spooky sounds. And specifically, if you were trying to get Luigi's Mansion, you need a theremin. So yeah. that's what you got to do. Yep. You need that. So um, cool. Well, I think that's it for this week. Uh, happy Halloween, everyone. And happy have Halloween. a safe have a safe trick or treat tomorrow night if you are participating with yourself or your family. Uh, and we will see you all next week in November. Okay. So have a good one. All right, peace, everybody. Bye.